Thank you for joining me here today. I'm here today to start the fight back against a bully and a liar. I'm here to say enough is enough with this mayor who thinks he can get away with anything by twisting the truth, say some of the truth, or not telling it straight at all. For those who will shrug and say, well that's just politics, I'll say they're dead wrong and they're lying to themselves. I'm here to comment on some things that have occurred over the past few days to set the facts straight for the record, both for my constituents in Scarborough and others across the city. For the record, I've always supported a subway for those who live in Scarborough. Just two and a half months ago, I joined the mayor and voted in favor of a subway. I voted for a subway based on sound financial transparency, disclosure, and the commitment there would be no tax hike for people in this city, and especially my constituents. Everyone here knows that. And everyone knows the mayor stood for the same thing at that time. But that's not the vote that came to council last week. It was for a subway which guarantees a tax hike, is not transparent, and does not disclose the full extent of the financial commitments we're making for that decision. And to my shock, Mayor Ford gave in on his long-standing pledge to hold the line and make sure we knew all the financial implications of the subway deal. Because of this, I went the other way. I didn't, as he says, lead a charge against subways in Scarborough. What I did was lead a charge against a tax hike and no financial clarity. It's the mayor who caved, not me. It's the mayor who's now doing what he always does when he doesn't want to be caught out or be truthful. He's just using his bully pulpit to find a scapegoat for his own failings here at City Hall or out on the streets of Toronto. The choice to me last week was very clear. Either vote with the mayor, who had broken his promise and changed his mind on something he'd said for months, or vote for the alternative and resign from his executive committee, which I felt was the honorable thing to do. And that's what I did. I voted the other way because I'm not interested in having tax hikes for people or creating a financial boondoggle down the road. What I've been about as a councillor is the value of taxpayers' money. I'm with the mayor in fighting gravy at City Hall. That's why I backed Rod Ford from the outset in 2010 and was a member of his executive committee. I'm proud of many of the things that I accomplished on that committee. It was plausible to stick around while the agenda was being pressed forward and the needs of the people of Toronto were being met. The subway and whether it is it is needed has never been an issue to me. How it was funded it has. I've always resisted new taxes for an overtaxed city, and that was the appeal of the agenda many people supported in electing Mayor Ford in the last election. Tossing that position aside is just cynical politics, which is a fun game when you don't have to pay the bills. In this regard, I've had enough, and I won't stand by and silently watch as we add to our debt. So I've done all I can do, i voted against it, and I've resigned from the Executive Committee. When I told the Mayor the other day I was resigning from his Executive Committee, he looked me in the eye, said he respected me, and looked forward to us being friends for a long time to come. Just three short hours later, he carpet-bombed Scarborough residents with a robocall, telling them I voted against subways. He went on CFRB with his brother on the weekend, and unopposed ranted over my position and said all I was doing and said all he was doing was letting constituents know my voting record. We all know here what that was. It was a blatant act of political thuggery, the type of which has never been witnessed before. Robocalls using the mayor's phone number and his own voice to my constituents. On the weekend, an open radio show, he said this was just the beginning and that it would happen to others soon enough. This says two things to me. First, he knows I'm right for calling him out on a tax hike flip-flop, and the debt run-up we face on hidden costs, so he singled me out and he's trying to change the subject. Second, this mayor and his brother will use whatever means or platform they have to demonize those who point out the apparent truth when they've overstepped it. Well, I'm here to tell the four brothers this. I'm not scared of you. People in this city won't be fooled. And people in my constitu constituency of Scarborough know who I am 
and what I stood for and what I'm about. Mr. Ford, you can throw a Ford Fest party in my backyard, but I live there and you don't. This week, I'm going to be doing two things. First, I'm going to file a complaint with the City of Toronto Integrity Commissioner about the Mayor's conduct. I'm compelled to get it on the record because if it happens to me, then it could happen to anyone else who sits on council and beyond, who crosses swords with the mayor and is equally bully brother. And for those of you who will just shrug and say once again, that's politics, or the bully mayor's brother who will shrug and say, they're just letting people know how people are voting on items at City Hall. Let's be clear, American style politics has no place in Toronto City Hall, let alone this country, and the mayor has crossed the line. If it isn't stopped here and now, it will be an all-year-round smear campaign where election campaign rules will be considered a joke. Second, I'm going to vigorously campaign for my own seat in the upcoming election in 2010 to keep representing Scarborough faithfully as I've done for close to the past eight years. Not being part of the executive committee now gives me the independence to speak my mind and do nothing but stay true to the principles and values that took me to the City Hall in the first place in 2006. Thank you very much. Paul, are you also going to go to the CRTC with this thing? Uh, George, my, that's what I've been advised by people. They, they've got a lot of concerns. Um, I'm certainly going to be going to the CRTC. That is Filing a complaint. I think that, you know, um, you know, a lot of the calls that I got on Friday um, from residents right across my ward as soon as it started uh, happening, they considered the robocall slanderous. Uh, you know, part of the context was that I led a fight against subways in Scarborough. I certainly didn't do that. And I think the mayor's also started campaigning early. Um, you know, a number of my residents, when they heard the robocall, um, clearly understood that he was going to be supporting somebody else against me, or words to that effect, um, by robocalling me after, you know, he'd won a, a vote just four days earlier. Sorry, any plans to see the mayor for um, I'm certainly not going to go down that low, but I certainly think that we have a member's code of conduct uh, that has to follow. I do my best to follow it, and I'll be talking to the Integrity Commissioner about it. Can you shed some more light on the what you describe as the bullying tactics of the mayor and his brother now that you're free to speak about this? Well, I think, Jackson, you can, you can look back over the past uh, eight months where, you know, I've sat on the mayor's executive committee since 2010, and over the, the past eight months where I've had a number of disagreements over who should be sitting on uh, panels that I, I've been asked to appoint members to boards of directors. Uh, there is the um, instance over the budget. Uh, one that was glaringly evident to me was we were trying to find uh, uh, a balance in the budget over uh, children's nutrition programs. The money that I was looking at using and we ultimately used was from a fund that we get, it's called interest on investments. It's basically a rainy day savings account that's how everybody looks at it. We, I uh, worked at an agreement with other councillors to take money out of that fund for uh, children's nutrition so they'll go to school hungry. I heard loud and clear after the budget committee, I had one of my colleagues uh, just screaming at me and the mayor looked at me and he says, you know what, we'll deal with that later. And I've had a number of instances. Uh, just a few weeks ago, I attended a wine and cheese at a uh, at a garden party in Scarborough for David Sinaki, who think, who's thinking about running for mayor. He's been a friend of mine. I worked for him. Uh, a couple of people called the, the mayor's brother, said I'd been at a wine and cheese. I got a text from him that very day saying, you know, if this is how you're going to be, we're going to have to reevaluate our friendship. And clear, clear to me, last Friday, when the mayor looks at me, after I go over and say, listen, I'm not take, trying to take this personally. I'm politically personally not happy on your executive, so I'm resigning from it. He sh shakes his hand and goes, buddy, we're still friends. We're going to be friends for a long time. And then three hours later, he's robocalling my residents, telling me how I'm inappropriately voting at City Hall. So it's been a long eight months for me. I finally decided last Friday that enough was enough and couldn't sit on that executive committee with them anymore. What's wrong with the mayor telling your constituents how you voted? I don't have any problem with the mayor telling me, telling my residents how, how he voted. Using a robocall and saying that I led the charge against subways in Scarborough, I did not lead the charge against subways in Scarborough. I looked at this particular line 
And I did a lot of reading. I talked to a lot of people. When you have your choice between, on this hand, an LRT that's basically free, and you have a subway system for $910 million with a whole bunch of costs from capital maintenance costs to cost overruns, all that would have been assumed by the province if we built an LRT. And go over on the other side, and it's all under the guise of negotiating with the province. And it might not be a true cost. My experience around here, a lot of those costs, we're going to end up with a taxpayer. 